In the last section, we learned about skeletons and blend shapes, and we explored our animation library. And what we're gonna do in this section is actually start combining our animation library with some cameras and make our very first kind of piece of animation. If this is where you left off, hopefully you have your fun scene of all these different characters, we're gonna actually go to a different level now. So let's go and click on the content folder, go to maps, and we're gonna go to example two. And don't forget, if you haven't saved, go ahead and save what you've done. And here we have bit and bot on a plain background. And let me show you what we're gonna do in this section. So I'm gonna go back to content, sequences, and we're gonna open up example two shot. And this is gonna open up a new tab called the sequencer. And the sequencer is essentially kind of like an editor where we can bring in our camera, our animations, we have a timeline, all the pieces that we need to essentially animate a shot. We use shots a lot in animation. A shot is just kind of like one section of action. Usually when you watch a movie, there's a lot of different shots. If cameras are changing, if the characters are changing, those are all different shots. So we can kind of encompass action into one shot. And later on, you'll actually be able to put multiple shots together to begin telling your stories. I've opened up example two shot. And if you click this little camera icon here, you'll see that it's framed up. And if you hit play down here, it'll kind of go through and you can see they're dancing and twirling and they kind of end there. So we have example two shot open and I'm going to take you through a little bit of the pieces through here and then we're going to make our own from scratch. So we have a camera cuts track which just references which camera we're using. Below that we have a cine camera actor. Here we have some camera settings. For example, the focal length. We can use the focal length to make our characters appear larger or smaller. So for example, it's set to 30 right now, but if I make my focal length larger, you can see the character is getting larger. And if I make my focal length smaller, the character's getting smaller. I'm gonna set this back to 30. And our focus distance is just telling our camera where we want to focus. And you'll notice that this is kind of like a vertical camera and that was done here under the camera setting. So when you're clicked on the camera in the detail section, you can see there's a sensor width and height. And if I drag these, you can see the camera shape is changing. So if you want a camera to be a different shape, all you need to do is adjust the sensor width and height. If you want to learn more about cameras, you can check out the Unreal Futures Careers in Fashion lesson where they dive a bit more into all these camera parameters that I'm talking about. So those are our camera settings. Then below here we have bit and bot and you can see here that we have different animations kind of sectioned out. So it starts with joy and I can scrub through and then we go to dancing and I'm going to just click off. There we go dancing, twirl, and then kind of holding the pose here. So you can see I have all these different animations and I'm blending them together to bring the character to life. So let's actually go and make this from scratch. So now we're gonna close the sequencer and show you how to make this from scratch. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna right click and under animation, you're gonna go and find level sequence. And let's call this, I'm just gonna call this dancing shot. And then we're gonna double click on that. And you can see it is empty. So we need to go add all the pieces that we need. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to add is our camera. So let's double click on the camera. And you can see it added that camera cuts track for us already and the cine camera track. But we need to adjust our camera so that it matches the one that I showed you. So again, make sure you're clicked on the camera and we're gonna go adjust this width and height. So what you can do, we're essentially gonna kind of just flip the value. So this, the width needs to be 13. So you can type the numbers here if you know them. You can also drag this slider across if you're not quite sure on what the value should be. So let's have this be like 13 and let's make the height 26. I think it was a little over 26, oh, too far. Okay, 
So you can play with those values, get one that you like. Um, and now we have the shape of our camera. So the next thing I showed you is the focal length. So how big or small we wanna make our characters. So you can see I can scrub this back and forth. I can also type values in here as well. So if you kind of want to see what the different values do. But let's go to 30. I think 30 sounds good because they'll have some animation. Their arms will be down. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I want my camera to be focused on both of them. So again, click down your cine camera. You can scroll down to these focus settings. And under manual focus distance, if you click this little eyedropper and then click on one of the characters, you'll see this value updated so now it's focused on them. Now, if you don't see some of the settings that are matching what you're seeing in the video, make sure you always drop down these arrows. So for example, for the film back settings to adjust the width and height, you wanna make sure you're toggling this arrow and dropping that out. I'm gonna do that for all of the settings here just so we can make sure we can see all of them. But at any moment, if you don't see matching settings as you're watching these videos, always hit those little arrows. They have a bunch of good information under them and a lot of settings that we wanna use. So always keep your eye out for those. As you're working in your shots, if you want to pilot the camera, which means you wanna fly the camera around and position it in a good spot, you're going to want to click on the Cine Camera Actor and make sure this little camera icon is selected. And you can see up here how this changed to Pilot Active Cine Camera Actor. And I'm going to press my right mouse button down and I'm going to use WASD to fly around. And I can get close to my characters, I can get far from my characters, I can explore all around. And if I'm done piloting and I don't want to drive the camera anymore, I can just hit this eject button and I will be no longer flying that camera around. Okay, so we have our Cine camera and now let's add our animation. So I'm going to click on bit in the world outliner and drag bit over here. Same thing with bot, we're going to drag bot over here. And then what we can do is you can see there's an animation track, but it's empty. Um, an animation track is essentially just where we can add um, the animation clip. So if you see, if I click this plus sign, you can see all the animations pop up here. Um, tracks just let us kind of organize different things. So we have an animation track where we can add the animation. We have a transform track where we can tell the characters where they should be standing. So you can see there's a location. So if we wanted to move bit, we could click on this icon here and move bit around. That's changing her location. So there's a transform track for that. So there's different tracks just to kind of organize the different things that we want to do. So let's click back on bit and we're going to click on animation and let's start with a dancing one. And I'm going to do the same for bot. We're going to hit the animation track and do dancing. And then if you scrub, you can see now they're both dancing, but then when it ends, it stops. So you could, if you wanted them just to be dancing the whole time, you could drag this out for the whole length of the shot. And now they're dancing the whole time. But what we're gonna do is we actually want them to do a couple different things. So let's go from dancing and then we can go ahead and go into a twirl. So let's do the twirl start. So this is like one of the examples I talked about earlier. The start's kind of that initial pose. And now you can see if I add it here, then bit will go from dancing and then into the twirl. But if I wanted to kind of blend the animation so they feel like they happened more naturally together, I can click on this bar and kind of drag it. So you can see there's this section here that's overlapping now. And if I scrub through, you can see it blends a lot better from going from dancing to the twirl. Now that we've added the twirl, I'm gonna add the twirl loop because I want Bit to kind of hold that for a while. Okay, let's go to bot now and we're gonna have him dancing a bit longer. 
And let's look for the twirl. Start. Again, I'm going to overlap that so it blends a bit. Let's go ahead and have the twirl loop. That, and then we can drag this out like that. So let's go to the beginning and let's watch what we have so far. You can move this playhead to the beginning and press play to watch the timing of your characters. So another fun thing, once you've set this up, if you've decided that maybe you want something different, maybe you don't want bit dancing first, what you can do is you can right click on here and go to properties and you can change the animation out. So maybe let's have her clapping instead. And that's a really cool way of doing it because if you've already timed everything out and you like the flow, but maybe you just want a different animation, you can just swap that. And now you can see that bit is clapping goes into the twirl. So if you wanna change out different pieces after you've kind of organized them and blended them together, you can definitely do that. So going back to here, um, you can continue to add different animation clips. You can shrink them or stretch them to make them longer. And if you want, so this is kind of just like a short little shot. Um, we're gonna go and definitely make some longer ones, but if you wanted to have this be a little bit longer, what you can do is change this value at the bottom here. You see, if you change this to like 500, you'll notice that this bar got shorter. And if you grab this end and pull it, you can see that our timeline is much longer now. I changed this number down here to 500, but what I was actually changing is the number of frames. So let's jump into a quick explanation on what frames are because they'll definitely come up throughout this whole series. And then we'll jump back to finishing up um, adding our animations. And a frame is just a still image from a piece of animation. So if you think about watching a movie or a TV show, it's just a bunch of still images that are playing back really fast. And that's what makes the animation. And if I grab this red line, and drag it all the way to the end, then what I can do is I can go and adjust my camera cut track, I can adjust all my animation, so now I have a really long shot um, that I can use. So again, this will definitely let you add different clips, different animations in there. Let's go find another one. Let's do skip that. And you can make your own little fun piece of animation. So we've set up our shot here, and now what we're gonna do is something called rendering. And that's essentially gonna take everything that we did inside of Unreal and put it into a video clip for us that we can share with our friends and family. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna make sure you still have your shot open that you created, and there's gonna be this little movie clapper icon here, and if you hover over it, it'll say render this movie to a video, or image frame sequence. And we're gonna click on that. And you should see the name of your shot here. Then you're gonna click this drop down and you're gonna pick render settings. And by default, where this is going to render to is this folder here. So projector is essentially this project. So wherever this project lives, there's gonna be a saved folder. And inside of there, there's gonna be a movie renders folder where this shot will be. If you would like to change where this outputs to, click on your render settings and go to output. And in this output directory, you can click this and pick a different folder. If you want it on your desktop or in your documents, you can pick a separate location here um, to put your video file. So I'm happy with it here. I'm gonna hit accept and then we're gonna hit render local. And you can see that it has started rendering. So you can see it's going through all of the frames and converting it to an image. And it's gonna take all the images and make it into a video for us. So just let that run until it's done and that screen will close once it's finished. And then it's done and you should be able to navigate to wherever you saved that file and you should see a movie file. 
So I saved mine in the project. I'm gonna go into saved, movie renders, and you can see here is our dancing shot. If you're on a Windows machine, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a QuickTime player installed so you can play the media file that comes out. It is an MOV media type. I've shown you how to make your very first shot, add a camera, add some animation. So go ahead and use example map two to make your very own uh, shot. You can play with the camera, you can have the camera any shape and size that you want, you can put any animations on the characters. So go ahead and do that. And in the next section, we're gonna learn how to start modifying some of these animations. So maybe there's a clip that you really like, but you think it'd be funnier if it was doing something else, or maybe you just wanna tweak something small on it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that next.